Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this line and wash painting of the beach at Cookmere Haven at, at low tide using this wonderful photograph that was taken by Morgana Rose Art for inspiration. Um, she's got a wonderful art channel. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description below. Why not pop over and say hi. Today I'm using Milford cotton um, cold press paper. It's taped to my board and my board is an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity will help me paint. I've simplified and sketched out the scene with waterproof fine liners. Um, I used Pigma Micron 0.5 and a Faber-Castell pit pen um, size medium. You can see that what I've done is I've outlined everything that I want to have um, as the main characteristics of the painting. So as my focal point, I've got the cliffs, the Coast Guard cottages and the sea wall and um, a, a breakwater which is stretching out into the sea. I want to leave plenty of room for the painting to breathe, so to, so to speak. Lots of space in the sky and the foreground, so there's very little detail there. You'll also notice that I've placed a piece of masking tape carefully across the horizon line um, so that I can keep my sea fairly clean and get a nice sharp edge where the sea meets the sky. So I'm going to paint the sky first wet in wet so using my size 14 Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush I'm wetting the sky mostly all over leaving a few dry patches so that I can get some nice soft and hard edges in, in my sky. This is a small round synthetic Polina Bright uh, brush and I'm putting in some very diluted raw sienna just to take away a little bit from the white of the paper before I go in with some cobalt blue and I've put a little bit of that across the cottage area too. This is my cobalt blue, um, it's a Jackson's own brand artist quality paint and it's really lovely and I'm working across my sky keeping it nice and bright um, near to the top and having a few areas of clouds scudding across the sky and I'm going to get it lighter if I can uh, by not recharging my brush and going into the damp paper towards the horizon. So as I say I'm looking for it to be sort of more intense blue higher up and just sort of softer blue down over the masking tape. You can see where I've got some dry patches in the sky. I've got some nice hard edges which I can sort of soften up if there are a few too many and just working the brush through the paint until I get the sort of perspective of the sky with the clouds coming forward towards us that I want. Making sure that that very pale blue is all the way along over the masking tape. And then just dabbing out the paint out of my cottages for now so that I can keep them nice and pale. And I'll take the masking tape off nice and quickly and see how it's looking. And I'm very pleased with that. So now I can start to work on the land. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that same blue, not quite so bright, but I'm going to bring the same blue across my beach um, so that I've got some wet areas and the sky reflecting in them. If I get those in first, then I can build the rest of my beach around that and that will link the sky to the land and give me a nice amount of, of colour harmony in my beach. I'm simplifying my beach quite a lot. I'm going to keep it very fresh. There's a lot of seaweed in the photograph, but I'm going to leave that out because I'm concerned that if I try painting the green seaweed in the foreground, that it might end up looking um, a bit too much like grass and be a bit confusing for the viewer. So I've decided to use my creative and artistic license to simplify the beach. This is raw sienna and with my three quarter inch flat brush which I just used to feather through the paint and the washes on the beach. I'm using it now to put in the cliff. Working around the seawall leaving that unpainted for now 
and then starting to work a bit of that raw sienna in, in and around the beach. The paint is still damp, so everything's going to diffuse nicely and just give me some nice variety of hues. And you can see I'm warming up the mid and foreground with a bit of burnt sienna as well to add some variety and warmth to the closer areas. I'm mostly using horizontal strokes of the brush and just the tips and this is keeping the land and the water nice and flat. And now some burnt umber and Payne's Grey added to the mix and these, this will give me uh, my shadows and my darks in the foreground on the beach for the rocks and stones and shingle. Um, I'm using quite a rich mixture of paint, quite a creamy mix now, and you can see that it's standing out really nicely. And then as the rich paint runs out from my brush, I can, um, I can just add a bit more soft tone to the water just trying to balance out the tones and the composition a little bit more and then the last thing to do for this main wash is using a clean damp brush uh, my three quarter inch flat brush I'm going to lift out some lighter areas across the sand and the distant sea just to bring back a bit more light and the look of the wet sand. Now to leave it to dry completely. And once it's dry, I can just put in a few more small details to finish it. So here it is, it's all dried back really nicely. Um, I'm just gonna have to put in a few finishing touches, um, not too much. To be honest, most of it was done in the first wash, but I'm just going to add a little bit more detail in and around the focal point. So just using a half inch flat brush, I'm putting in a bit of um, a sort of a brownie gray color from the burnt umber and cobalt blue and a bit of Payne's gray into the sea wall and then using a paler mix um, into this part of the sea wall here, working around the uh, breakwater posts as I go carefully. This is a Jackson's own brand icon flat brush. So I think that's enough tone for the sea wall. And I'm going to just run a bit of tone underneath the cliffs. And I'm just going to mix up some green with my cobalt blue and a bit of cadmium yellow. And using my small calligraphy brush or any small brush with a good point, I'm going to go over my um, ink line work bushes and trees um, surrounding the Coast Guard cottages and growing over the top of the sea defences, just very loosely placing in this green and you can see that the focal point is now beginning to come together. A little bit of green, just a touch of it on the tops of the cliffs, nothing too much. Just about all the detail um, has been provided by the line work in this line and wash painting. So I'm literally just putting in a little bit of paint here and there just to sort of cement the illusion. Then some slightly brighter green for the grass in front of the bushes, a little bit across the top of the sea defence there. And then with a bit of mid-toned grey to just add a bit of tone here and there across the beach using horizontal brush strokes. Again, with the half inch flat, um, I'm following my faint 
um, fine liner marks I put in for the kind of perspective and flow of the water and the wet sand on the beach and I'm being guided by those to put in these marks. And now I've washed my brush out, I've mixed a little bit of raw sienna with cobalt blue to slightly warm the colour and I'm putting in my C. Using this flat brush, keeping a nice straight line across the horizon, trying to keep a little bit of white between the sea and the sky because I think that will look really pretty. And then just softening and fading that blue colour out a little bit, just making it sort of disappear across into the sort of lighter areas of, of wet sand. That same colour I'm going to use just to put a bit of um, shadow across uh, parts of these cottages. It's very pale, there's hardly any colour in it at all, so it's just adding a little bit of shadow here and there. And then I can mix up some burnt sienna, a fairly rich, rich mix, and use it to draw the eye to the focal point uh, by placing a little bit of this orangey brown um, around the sea defences, into the roof of the cottage and the chimney, and just a few little marks here and there. Um, and that hopefully will draw the eye um, of the viewer to that, and they will then be able to move around the painting. And a bit of really strong Payne's grey, just applied carefully to the breakwater poles uh, with the tips of the flat brush, makes them stand out even more. And then I can just um, wet one of the cottages and dab it out with a tissue. You can see that's come up nice and white and that just serves to make quite a nice contrast against the other two that are slightly more shaded. And then a slightly darker amount of tone just to build up for that um, shingle bar in the far distance, keeping it still, still quite pale because I do want that to recede. And now I'm just going to begin to put in some darker accents into the foreground rocks, shingle and sand. Um, some, just some stronger paint here and there uh, just to finish off the foreground so that the eye is drawn towards the foreground and sort of zigzags through the painting. So the important thing here is to work on getting just those small darks that are effectively drawing the eye in, but also I want to pull some of the darker marks further towards the left across the foreground, not too much, but just enough to balance up the composition. And then just a very fine bit of shadow here and there underneath the breakwater. Again, using the tips of the flat brush. And then finally, just checking the balance of the composition and a few more well-placed darks and I think, that's, I think that's the painting just about done. So now I'm going to remove the masking tape, pulling it away from the painting, um, and I'm gonna have a look at it and see how it looks with the clean white border. That helps me to see whether or not I think it's finished. And I'm quite happy with that, but I just think it needs a little bit of extra tone added to the sea wall. The sea wall at the moment is just looking a little bit blank so I'm just going to add a slightly darker glaze over the sea wall and then just sort of uh, blend that in with my finger a little bit. And I just think that works a lot better. It's only a small touch, but I think it's important. Well, I really enjoyed painting that. So thanks again to Morgana Rose Art for the photograph. And don't forget to check out her channel in the link below in the description. 
Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, please um, leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever I post another video, which is usually every Wednesday and Saturday. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.